Episode 1, Xenoblade, Japanese version review by a white guy who doesn't speak Japanese. Okay, so I don't know Japanese, but if there's one thing I do know, it's the language of video games. I had the previous experience of finishing the entire Japanese version of Valkyrie Profile Silmaria on the PS2, including the bonus dungeon and all the extra content. I had the experience of playing JRPGs since the original Final Fantasy, so I believe I am a very good choice for this review. Xenoblade is a complicated game. There are lots of menus, camera commands, and a character relationship system that even includes relationships with NPCs. The first thing I did was read some articles from sites like Kotaku and watch some videos on the battle system that were in Japanese. The rest of it was simply my own experimentation and observation. The first thing I noticed is that the game is stunning. This is a Wii game that has more detail than most of the HD games coming out today. Every plant moves, every tree blows, and the environment is green and colorful. The areas are huge. It is similar to Final Fantasy XII and MMORPGs in many ways. Monsters are strewn about everywhere, travel in packs, and are used to populate the massive areas. Your next plot location is marked by an orange arrow on top of the screen and a changing number like a Halo checkpoint. The towns are life-size and have the usual shops and NPCs. Some of them having exclamation points over their heads in order to provide quests which involve collecting items or killing certain types of monsters. As for combat, you press a button to bring up a menu at the bottom of the screen with battle commands on it. This will highlight any surrounding enemies and show their level and some basic info. You can initiate combat by hitting the middle red sword icon on your skill menu. Most enemies mind their own business, but some will attack you. They also will attack in herds, so be warned. Your characters attack automatically at fixed intervals. You can select any special skills from your bar at any time. They do more damage than regular attacks and will regenerate after use. As you attack, a bar above your character's head will increase. This is used for chain combos. Sometimes a quick time event will occur based on your battle prowess, which can increase the combo bar. When the bar is full, you can use the control pad to cycle through the commands in the, in the middle of your skill bar. This includes combos utilized by activating the triangle symbol, special abilities with the Monado Sword or Xenoblade, and a symbol for running away. You can select any character to control, while the others are controlled by the AI. But you'll probably want to use your main character because of the Xenoblade special abilities. These are only gained through story progression. The other skills are gained through leveling. One of these abilities is used to create a field to make some enemies weak to regular attacks. The other ability is used during battles where the screen will flash white and the enemy will be shown hitting a character for a lot of damage, usually a fatal amount. When battle resumes, you have a time limit to use your ability to shield your party member from the impending doom. It is a cool new feature that involves some strategy. Use up your Xeno ability before it can recharge, and you will seriously regret it. There are other combat tricks like using a pinkish color sword skill with your lead character, and having the AI use a green color to temporarily disable your opponent. As for the story, spoiler alert time, it involves something about two gods who fought each other whose bodies make up the world map. There is a mechanical one and a nature god. There is a playable character that dies early on, and some old warriors who join you who are part of the intro story. There is a small part about a mother reclaiming her son who is prone to mischief. She joins your party and is actually a pretty valuable party member. There are some exciting battle cutscenes in the game that remind me of games like Devil May Cry. They are done in real time rather than being a CGI sequence or an FMV. Any other story information I don't really know because of the aforementioned language barrier and that I'm only about 8 hours into the game. Here are some pros. Xenoblade is an epic quest that awards exploration. It has a strategic battle system and is fun to play. It's a feast for the eyes both in the cutscenes and the gameplay. The music is being done by six different composers including Yasunori Mitsuda of Chrono Cross and basically any PlayStation Squaresoft game in the 90s and early 2000s and Yoko Shimomura who did the scores for Kingdom Hearts and Legend of Mana. Here are some cons. The camera is very awkward on the Wii mode. Also, the camera can be really frustrating in battle. The Wii mode is awkward in general and they recommend you use a classic controller. It is difficult to know what your AI characters are going to do. Characters won't always heal when you need them, and there is some luck involved because you can't always control the other characters. One of them might use the wrong attack or not he or heal you when you have full health, but so far the AI seems to be pretty smart anyway. 
Overall, Xenoblade is a good game already, and if the story turns out to be decent, a great game. If you like JRPGs, pick this one up. Don't wait for it to come out here, don't wait for Nintendo to get their act together. It is definitely worth it. This is Dan Taylor for R to the Third Power, signing off.